Okay, so in the last video we went over the basics of adding fractions, just doing simple arithmetic, right? Um, now, you'll have to add fractions in your calculus course. That's going to happen. It's going to come up. You're going to have to do it from time to time. Uh, the other situation that you're going to be dealing with, though, is you're going to have to add fractions involving not just numbers, but probably variables, right? Chances are x, right? So you might have to do something like, you know, x over x plus 2 minus x squared over x, oh, let's do x squared minus oh, x plus 2, something like that, okay? And you want to combine those two fractions. All right. Well, you can kind of blindly follow this rule here, right, with a is x, b is x plus 2, right, c is x squared, and so on. Um, or, or you can try to think in terms of what we were doing here and break things down and say, okay, so I need a common denominator, right? Um, one of the things that can help <coughs> when you're trying to find a common denominator, even with numbers, is to think about factors, right? So here, what might have helped us is to realize that, oh, 10. 10 is 2 times 5, right? I factor that as 2 times 5. Now that I know it's 2 times 5, and because I know I already have a 5 here, I just have to multiply top and bottom by 2, right? If I use this rule here, I'd be doing 5 times 10, I would be getting 50 as my denominator, right? I'd end up with 35 over 50 as my fraction, then I might choose to reduce afterwards, right? Um, so you can do the same sort of thing here. You might say, okay, well, x over x plus 2. Can't really do anything with that. x squared. Let's see. Can I factor that denominator? Um, well, I'm going to need something with an x and a 1, something with an x and a 2. Um, oh, sorry. Minus 2. Um, otherwise, it's not going to work. And, and let's see, if I do x plus 2 oh, and plus x, there we go, I should plan these ahead of time, all right? So with that factoring, x minus 1 times x plus 2, all right, let's go back and check, x squared plus 2x minus 1x gives me x minus 2, right? I notice, oh wait, x plus 2 already shows up in both fractions, just like the 5 already shows up in both fractions. So when I multiply top and bottom to get the same denominator, I don't have to multiply by this whole quadratic. I only have to multiply by x minus 1. Okay. There we go. And now I can put those together, right? I can write everything over, over one denominator. If I wanted to, maybe I even multiply this x through, right? x squared minus x minus x squared. You can leave that bottom factored or you can multiply it back out if you want. Chances are, if you're doing a calculus problem, you're going to leave that bottom factored because you probably want those factors, right? They're going to tell you about things like vertical asymptotes if you were trying to graph this. Um, they might be helping you solve an inequality. Uh, the last thing you might choose to do is notice that, hey, x squared minus x squared. Those simplify, right? They cancel. Anything minus itself is zero. So I just have minus x over x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, and I'm done, right? So the reason that we want to understand fraction addition, other than the fact that you're probably going to have to add fractions at some point, is that understanding fraction addition lets you understand how to manipulate expressions like this, right? How to combine and simplify. And this is the sort of thing that you're going to have to do fairly often once you get into, you know, derivatives, curve sketching, things like that. These types of calculations, they're going to come up. You want to know how to do them.